Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bartitzer Lab, and if you might not have guessed from the get-up, I'll be talking about World War II combatives today in honour of the D-Day landings. And one of the things I wanted to talk about is blades of World War II. You know, I've got a good interest in historical blades and how they were used, and, and, and that fascinates me. And in previous videos, I've talked about the Fairburn Sucks fighting knife, talked about the Smatchet, talked about the Cobra, the post-war Cobra, the SOE knives, and probably one of the most used and most ubiquitous and probably the most effective bladed weapons of World War II, if you discount the use of a bayonet just for a second, is in the humble machete. Now, the pattern I've got here, this is a sword um, British military pattern galock. So again, this is a lovely bit of kit. Comes in a lovely squared off sheath, like so. This would be a very, very premium machete. Then you've got all the way down to very budget Latin style machetes here, so you can see they're a little bit more traditional in their shape. But in either instance, this tool is probably the most ubiquitous, the most used, the most effective bladed article of World War II, you know, for the reason that jungle warfare proximity is different. If you look at the Asian theatre, you're having to use a tool like this to get through bush, to get through scrub, and opponents are likely to be within three and ten meters of contact is going to be very very close because your visibility your proximity to opponents is very different to what it would be in an urban suburban you know woodland setting arctic setting these are very very different close dense surprising type of warfare and you need a tool like this to make way to get through problem is if i'm making my way through and i spot an enemy three meters from me five meters from me, the time it takes me to remove, deploy, resheath, draw a pistol, draw a submachine gun, draw a shotgun, all these, you draw a carbine, all these jungle fighting tools, that takes time and you can very, very rapidly take up that distance. So if I've already got a tool in my hand, it's already, already orientated towards where the enemy may be, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to consider that I can just use this as potentially a primary tool on first contact. You know, this is this is a thing that will see the enemy first. So it's a very, very useful tool. And there's lots of first-hand accounts of people using machetes, glocks, cookeries, jungle knives in that type of environment. If you look at the Chindit forces and other people in the Asian theatre, all the way up to say, the, the Malaysian emergency, this is a key fighting bladed tool. And not only that, it allows you to fulfill the survival parts that are absolutely necessary too. And like a fighting knife, you can use this to make shelter, you can use it to hack open coconuts, you can you know, build all manner of constructions using some of that. You can batten it really well, it's a strong, robust blade, so it can move your way through the jungle, it can help you construct the things you need for survival, it can be used on larger animals that are going to put up a bit more of a fight, as well as being very good against humans. So it's a, almost in many ways a superior item because it is a tool and a weapon as opposed to just primarily a weapon. But this is the Glock pattern. But if you can imagine, fighting is much closer, and therefore the use of things like this is gonna be a lot more prolific. And some ways in which they would have been used. A great example would be simple arcs in an X pattern, forehand and backhand in front of you because this matches the methodology you'll be using to get your way through scrub anyway. So you'll have attuned your muscles, your flow, your ability to put weight behind it, all of these things you would have developed anyway, because this is how you've been moving through that environment. It offers you brilliant passive defense in that when you go on a diagonal angle, you can deflect things that come down vertically you can block things that come in diagonally, and eventually you block things that come in horizontally, because you're moving through this angle. So it's got very good defense for you as a human, as well as being the offensive way to use the blade. So it is offensive in these, and these can be tight to the body, and these can be further away from the body, depending on the environment, but they offer you a degree of protection as well as offense, which is very, very cool, very, very useful. You've got thrusts. Now, you can thrust with these. It's a bit harder to thrust with something like 
the Golok here, but with the Latin machete, much, much easier. And there are hundreds of different varieties, but the best angles are using this in a horizontal format. So it's sliding in this way, as opposed to this way. This way can get caught in all manner of ribs, bone, dense muscle groupings, whatever. Here, simple in and out. If you're looking to use this combatively, it's going in, taking an organ or an artery that matters, coming out fast, and doing so multiple times before you yourself get injured. Simple as that. Boom, nice, easy thrusts that can be done. So short, tight, X-style patterns. You've got your thrusts. Another note about the X-style patterns is that you can use broken or fluid energy. So broken energy, hack, hack, hack. One, two, three. Fluid energy goes through. So and you can combine these. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And any number there out. Fluid energy might open up another angle. Broken energy might be best used against hands. If a hand is on a rifle, you can take that hand, take that artery, and then really go to town. You can use these snapping broken energy chops. They're great for damaging hands because hands deliver weapons. So if you can take out the hand fast, if you're moving through the brush, you see a hand touching a rifle, boom! That hand isn't gonna to touch much else for much longer. So again, it's a key tool. Broken energy, fluid energy. Thrusts using the particular pattern. Then you've also got the use of the pommel. So you can crack into the pommel coming down, coming up, coming inside. Down, up, up would go under the jaw. You can see here it's got a lovely little notch that can clip right under the jawbone. Bang, down and in. And if you think about these in terms of World War II empty hand blows, this coming under the jaw, exact same as a chin jab. This coming down on the collarbone, on the nose, wherever, exact same as an edge of hand blow. So you've got lots of different options. Again, you can hit with the pommel outwards, to the temple, to the jaw, exactly the same as an edge of hand blow. So you can mix your unarmed and your armed very, very simply, very, very, very easily. Okay, so it's very important to think about flanking with this tool as well. We want to move from a point where he's at his most dangerous to the point where he's at his most powerless. So again, being able to diagonally step and move my way through is important. So for example, I might step diagonally cut with a forehand blow. Then I might step laterally across with a backhand. So typically if you want fast, offensive, but still keeping you safe, these short, sharp, broken and fluid pattern X's matter. You can get to a juncture where you need something more final. And in, in modern kind of Filipino systems, we talk about the termination strikes. So a backhand along the horizontal, across the neck, and then a vertical, which can come either down the head or into the neck or into kind of all your arterial regions here, chopping straight down. So you maybe chop, chop, flow, then you may go one, two, termination. Typically the termination strike is in two parts, one, two, cut across the neck and cut down, one, two, and you move on because naturally it's jungle warfare, there's going to be more than one person, so you need to be able to get through, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep flowing, move from person to person to person as much, causing as much damage, chaos, panic, injury, death as you can, that's the important thing about using this tool, you need that momentum, you need to be able to keep going. So the termination strikes, going across the throat, and then down, or down. And again, these ranges can be redacted or expanded. Redacted or expanded. 
and you've got simple flows so if you're looking to flurry with tool you may wish to do something like let me just take my screensaver off you can flow down re-angle up so you can flow this way which is quite a good way to take space so if you're rushing forward, one, two, one, two, you can really, but make sure that your edge is coming at the opponent. Edge down, edge up. The camera, the angle's coming across a bit weird here for you guys, so you'll see it slightly different to how it is. But we're cutting down, we're cutting up. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. So again, a simple flow might be these tight angles one and angle two in broken rhythm and fluid, broken, fluid, thrusts. You've then got your termination strikes, cross the neck, down, cross the neck, down, cross the neck, down. And you've got your flurries, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's just simple examples of how you can use machete, the bolo, as well as those close-up uses of the pommel, up, down, in and out, all of which are added value and can be combined with your empty hand strikes too. So don't forget just because you've got the tool to be able to do stuff with your hands, with your legs, with your knees, with your elbows, with your hands. These are all important aspects too. And if you think of target areas, now odds are, if you're moving through the bush or you're moving through the jungle with this, then you spot the enemy. The enemy is likely, he'll either have something like this himself moving through or he might have just been a bit ahead of you and have his weapon ready. If he's got his weapon ready, whether it's something like this or something that goes boom, in either instance, his hand has got to be a key, key target. I don't want hands pulling triggers. So again, if you think of these backhanded angles here whether it's in broken rhythm or fluid these are great shots to take out hands that would be on a rifle stepping in take the hand once you've done that that can allow you to take the neck take something a bit more serious hands are very important if you can't get the hands go toward the eyes because the eyes humans will move and just completely drop any other priority they've got to defend or move their eyes. So again, that termination strike, which traditionally comes across the neck, that goes towards the eyes. Any thoughts about any other weapon system or movement he's got will be abandoned in favor of fuck. So again, across the eyes, that could be just moving back, to get him into perfect range for a cut to the neck. So hands, eyes, and neck are all key areas for a use of a tool like this. But again, it's just a simple thing to think about, that whether it's for survival training, whether it's for World War II combatives, whether you just got an interest in this kind of history, it's very important, as much as we like to play and train with Fairbone Sykes fighting knives and smatchets and other bits and pieces, this is probably the most used, most efficient, most effective, most well-rounded tool of the era that you can get proficient with. And there are many different ways how you can work with it. There are many different schools of thought. There are more westernized, there are more eastern schools of using tools like this. But you see a lot of training footage on how this is used. It takes the part of many, many survival kits for both air, sea, and land forces. It can get you out of dodge, it can keep you safe, and it can be a very, very effective combat tool. So if you haven't for a while, just off any long knives that you've got, any machetes, any bolos, any galocks, and get practicing and see how seamlessly you can flow your World War II combatives open-handed into things that manifest and translate with a tool like this. So again, for a bit of historical interest, a bit of historical training, give it a play, give it an experiment, give it a go. It's very useful and very fun and a great way to connect with the people that came before us. So, jungle warfare training and thinking about longer blades. Enjoy!